This is FAIR TV. I'm Steve Rendell. Here's some of the things we noticed in the news this week. Unemployment is more than 26 percent and regular protests against austerity policies fill its streets. But the Washington Post's Howard Snyder holds up Spain as an economic model for France, unemployment 9 percent, and for other Euro nations. Scolding France for raising taxes on the wealthy and discussing the nationalization of a steel plant on January 16th, Schneider cheered Spain, which he said was reveling in the news, quote, that exports were rising and several auto plants would be expanded by their owners. It was a small sign of what could become a defining trend in the Eurozone, close quote. How'd they do it? Quote, the most troubled nations, including Spain, have slashed wage costs and overhauled labor and social rules in an effort to become more competitive." Close quote. So raising taxes on the rich, bad. Slashing wages, workers pay, good. If France doesn't get with it, says Schneider, they'll, quote, risk falling behind in Europe's struggle for economic revival. Close quote. The assumption is that Spain's harsh medicine is working. But Schneider offers no evidence for that besides his anecdote that auto plants may be expanding. After barely recovering from the 2008 economic crisis, Spain is currently back in recession. No matter, for the Post, quote, as neighboring countries retool their labor laws, trim social benefits, and overhaul Europe's social contract, they may be forming a new baseline France will have to match, close quote. In other words, there's a race to the bottom going on hurry up or someone else will beat you to it. Nonviolent protesters came up with a novel way to protest Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank. They occupied the land themselves. The Bab al-Sham's tents went up on privately owned Palestinian land in what Israel designates as the E1 part of the West Bank. Israel's announcement of a plan to build new colonies in that part of the West Bank is especially controversial. Also causing controversy, the way the New York Times covered the story. On January 12th, the Times posted a story with a headline, as you can see from this report on RT, quote, Palestinians set up camp in Israeli-occupied West Bank territory, close quote. Acknowledgement of the West Bank as occupied territory is relatively rare in corporate media. As Ali Abu Nima of Electronic Intifada noted, at some point the Times changed the headline to read, Palestinians set up tents where Israel plans homes." Close quote. The story, and another one the next day, both referred to Israeli-occupied West Bank territory. So the headline change was a curious choice, and not, of course, one without impact, as planning homes sounds like a very different activity than occupying someone else's land. Sometimes a media outlet makes it crystal clear about who exactly their intended audience is. And no matter what they say, it's not you. How much will your taxes jump was the headline over a Wall Street Journal article this month, a guide for understanding how the new tax rates will affect Americans at different income levels. And the article did an adequate job of that. But the most perplexing part about it was the infographic the paper used to illustrate the new tax burden. The poorest family, as you can see, are retirees with an income of $180,000. And then we have a single mom making $260,000. In the real world, a single mom makes an average of about one-tenth that amount. You could certainly knock the Wall Street Journal for presenting an extremely skewed vision of the world to its readers. But then again, maybe they know their audience, and it's not us. This is Steve Rendell for FAIR TV.